Hey guys, Rendon here with TJ Free, and in this video, we'll learn how to use Piskel to create a walking uh, pixel art animation like this. And you can also import this into a game. And I'll show another video showing how to um, get it configured. But in this video, we're just going to learn how to create this walking animation in Piskel. So uh, to get started, I just chose a nice skin color for a white guy for this character. And uh, this is sped up, uh, I believe, 4x four, four speed. So I took my time drawing this. Um, and I just kind of f fine tuned it as I was going. You'll notice that. And so what I wanted to do was just have a guy that kind of walked, his head would kind of bob, and just wearing like a shirt and jeans. So I chose this black color uh, for the shirt and figured I could go in and color it later. Um, and I mostly just used the pen tool. So I'm just left clicking to fill in each pixel individually. When I needed a new color, I just chose a color. Um, I didn't go work off of a specific palette or anything. Um, I realized at this point I was drawing the guy too low, so I decided to highlight the whole selection, uh, select everything, and then move it up a little bit. Uh, I started drawing the legs with one shoe up a little bit higher than the other. I decided to use the same almost black color, like a really dark black color for the hair. Uh, then I decided to fill in the rest of the shirt. Towards the end of the drawing, I started adding in more details, so slight color variations. Um, in the skin, like some shadows and highlights, and also some shadows and highlights in the uh, pants and shirt as well. Um, I should mention too, I'm really new to pixel art, and this is my f first time doing this kind of drawing. I just looked at some different um, types of pixel art of people and decided to go with this style. Um, and I thought it turned out pretty well. I ended up doing six frames total. And so I decided here to change the eyes, the ways the eyes work a little bit. And I thought I'd draw a, uh, a mouth in here and see what a mouth would look like. This is the shape I ended up going with as a single dot. But for most of the drawing, I just did this wide mouth with transparency behind it. So I decided to add in my next couple frames here. I just went to duplicate frame and then erase the parts of the first frame or of this duplicated what's in the first frame. I sort of erased the arms and drew them both straight down and erased the shoe and the leg shape a little bit to have this just be the standing default position. I gave the character thumbs and uh, yeah, then we added a third frame in and I started moving the arms more. So I wanted these arms to swing back and forth as the feet sort of moved up and down. Uh, so I started just drawing the, the one arm kind of going back behind there. And you can see here now, we can see an example of what this looks like. I slowed the animation down to six frames per second so I could see um, kind of what that was looking like. And it looked a little bit cyclical right here, like it didn't look like a natural walk cycle. And then again, I'm speeding up 4x, so it really is hard to see what's going on now in the, in the animation playback. But I added in a fourth frame um, and then would uh, change these. Ultimately, uh, I would add in two more frames to have six total. Um, the pants I spent a lot of time on, um, really it doesn't look very good from here, but when you zoom out it kind of looks a little bit better, a little bit. I fine tuned it uh, later as well. So I was feeling pretty good about the animation at this point. I decided to select the head and just move it down in one frame and then back in an another frame, um, alternating. So I think it was frame three I did down and then frame six I decided to go back. And so uh, every, it kind of had this this uh, pattern of going bobbing down and then back. And this is pretty close to the, the final thing. Notice the pants are a little bit, do a, a strange thing in like frame four, I think. So I decided to, to go in and change that a little bit so that it looked a little bit, didn't look quite so strange. I adjusted some of the highlights and shadows, or I guess the shadows. And then I chose a little bit darker skin color here, um, like almost a gr with more gray in it. And I decided to use that um, around the arms and the neck to give it a little bit more depth. Uh, just to create a little bit of a shadow and I didn't even really have to do this um, just a little bit goes a long ways of just creating that little bit of shadow um, and when when it's zoomed out this is a really really small this is a 32 by 32 pixels the entire view space right now so it's a really small character you really can't see that much detail at all when it's zoomed out very far but I figured I'd do a little bit there and this is what the final animation uh, looks like so I was pretty happy with it. So you can save it a couple different ways. If you just go to save, it'll save it as a Piskel file. So this is nice because you can get back into it and you can always edit it uh, at a future point in time. But this is just a format to use natively within Piskel. Uh, if you're wanting to export this into another program, then you the best thing to do, I think, is to export it in a PNG format. 
So another thing that we can do is download an animated GIF. So if you just want to share this online or use it maybe as part of an animation in a video, then you can do that. I also exported it as a PNG uh, image. And then I also exported it as a PNG image with a JSON file. So what these two do, it just shows it. Okay, and then the third thing I did was I did uh, just a PNG zip file. And I'll show you what each of these look like. Um, so just the animated GIF uh, looks like this. So we can zoom in. My player kind of blurs the edges, but this actually is, you could scale it up large and have it look still crisp. Again, this is going to look, this viewer is going to look blurry, but we'll open it in GIMP in a minute here and see that it is still very crisp. This is just the default PNG option. It puts, it's like a sprite sheet. It puts all six of them in one PNG image. Uh, and then this other one, this is the, uh, the PNG zip folder export. It exports all the frames in their own PNG image, and you can put a prefix on what they're called. And then this, with the JSON file, it's just the same thing as the sprite sheet, but it comes with a .json file that has some more information. I, I imagine this can be used in different game development software and different animation software, or you could parse this information yourself. It just makes sense of where the images are and how many there are and what order they go in. Uh, and so I, I'm going to open this in GIMP real quick here just to show you that we can um, zoom this PNG image. We can zoom in, or actually I can scale it and resize it, and it'll still be very sharp and pixelated. So if you wanted to have it be not quite so small to display the artwork, like in a web page or something, or print it out, you can scale it up using GIMP and have it be nice and crisp and clear. Well, that's the video, guys. Hopefully you found that informative. Uh, thanks for watching. Good luck creating your own uh, walking animation character. Uh, go ahead and leave your questions and comments below if you have any, and I look forward to catching you in the next video.